let me say that it is a privilege for me to be able to conduct this service this afternoon uh, in the absence of the Reverend Philip McRae, who is the minister of the congregation, who is on sabbatical. I knew Wilbert very well because in the last number of years of my ministry here in Rosemary Church, he was first of all a member of the congregation and then a member of the Kirk Session and indeed the Clerk of Session in the congregation. So I am privileged indeed to be invited to conduct this service this afternoon. Now, Claire uh, has not been able to greet you in the vestibule before the service because she and Wilbert's daughter, Ruth, both have COVID. So there they are uh, out of concern for your well-being. They are isolated and sitting together up in the gallery. And I have been asked to say that if any of you have any cause for anxiety regarding your own health and you feel uncomfortable to be in this service uh, because of the COVID which Claire and Ruth have, then you must feel quite free uh, to leave the service uh, at this point if you would like to. And there will be no embarrassment should you wish to do that. Now, after the service, you're, we are all invited down to the Lansdowne Hotel. Now, let me encourage you to go there. Wilbert's other daughter, Alison, who is sitting here at the front with her family, and her husband, Kevin, and other members of the family will be there in the hotel, and they will be able to greet you, but uh, Claire and Ruth will not be at the, at the hotel, or they will not be available to greet you uh, in the vestibule at the close of the service. Now, may I take this opportunity uh, on, be uh, on behalf of you all to convey to Claire and to Ruth and her husband, Greg, and to Alison and, and to Kevin and to Wilbert's grandchildren uh, and to their families, let me convey the sympathy of the congregation uh, to you all. Uh, they will not all be able to shake hands with you and to greet you in that way, so please accept this as an as a expression of the sympathy of the many people who have turned up here this afternoon. And you will be encouraged and gratified by the numbers of people who have come to this service. It is sometimes the case that when somebody gets into the middle part of the fourth decade of their lives that nearly all their contemporaries are dead and there's not too many people to turn up at the service. So the numbers of people here today, the numbers are a tribute uh, to Wilbert. We held a Christian burial service for Wilbert at Roselawn earlier this afternoon when in the full acknowledgement of the reality of death and the reality of human mortality, we affirmed the great trumpet sounds of the Christian faith with the words of Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Yet, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Fear not, said the Lord, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And in the words of St. Paul, now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now let us pray. 
We are pleased, O Lord, in the midst of the, our sadness and our grief and our sense of loss to hear these magnificent words from our Lord and Master Jesus Christ and the words of the Apostle Paul. We give you thanks that we have heard the good news of the gospel. We thank you that it has come down through the generations and across the continent to us here on this island on the edge of Europe. And we give you thanks that we have heard and we have believed and these matters are lodged deep inside our own individual hearts and within the heart of the Christian church. And now, O oh God, it is our prayer that by the power of your Holy Spirit that you will fill this service with your life and with your love, and especially bring the comfort of your Holy Spirit to those who grieve Wilbert's passing and to face ahead in the days ahead years of uh, and the period of time of loss and loneliness. And we pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together now to sing, and to sing the metrical version of the 121st Psalm, which is a psalm of pilgrimage sung by people on their way up to the festival at Jerusalem. They were thinking about the hills that are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is around about his people. And we who live in Belfast are surrounded by the hills uh, surrounding the city, whether it is the cave hill beside us here or the Castlery Hills on the other side. And just as the hills are around about Jerusalem and the Lord blesses his people, so as the hills are round about Belfast, so the Lord is around about his people. So let us stand and let us sing. I to the hills will lift mine eyes. From whence doth come mine aid? When, when I retired as the minister of this congregation 20 years ago this year, the presbytery appointed the Reverend John Seawright to be the convener of the vacancy. What that means is that he then had pastoral responsibility uh, for the congregation until such times as the congregation called Philip McRae to be their minister. 
John became very good friends with Wilbert and with Claire and has remained friends ever since. And they have, our Claire has asked if John uh, would be able to read the lessons today. Now these are scripture lessons which have been chosen by the family. The reading and the hearing of scripture is a very important part of this service. So can I invite you to pay attention as John reads two passages from the Old Testament and one from the New. It's a privilege to be asked to take part in this service. Wilbert, a true gentleman, a good friend. Let's hear the word of God. First from the Old Testament scriptures from the book of Ecclesiastes and chapter 3. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. And then words of the Lord through his prophet Isaiah to his people from Isaiah chapter 43. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. And the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. And then from the New Testament, from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, and chapter 4. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Show a gentle attitude toward everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. In conclusion, my friends, fill your minds with those things that are good and that deserve praise, things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely and honorable. Put into practice what you learned and received from me, both from my words and from my actions. And the God who gives us peace will be with you. Amen. And may God bless the reading of his word and to him be all the praise always. Trevor Long is now the clerk of session of this congregation, and Trevor will now say a, a word about Wilbur and his life in this congregation. Thank you, John. 
It is my privilege, my honor, uh, to be here at the front today to do two things. First of all, on behalf of the Kirk Session and Congregation of Rosemary, to welcome you all here to celebrate and remember the life of Wilbert. Uh, it is good to see many old friends, past members, visiting with us today, but also the family and the friends of Wilbert and Claire. You are all most welcome here today. And it is a bittersweet day. We mourn his passing, but we celebrate his life and we give thanks to God. Now let me tell you that I'm just the warm-up act. John Dunlop is the main act, and I have a small piece to play in that, in the sense that I'm referring simply to the contribution that Wilbert has given to our congregation. You see, when Wilbert and Claire were brought together and married, Rosemary Congregation got a great deal. We benefited in so many different ways. Not only did we get a new member, but someone who was active in so many different ways. A man of faith, a man of music, a man who sang with a, a bass voice, who played the organ on many occasions, who blessed us in many ways. A short time after joining the congregation, there was an election of elders here in Rosemary. And it is not our practice to co-opt people in, but if you're elected and you have been an elder elsewhere, then you are installed. And so uh, in 1999, Wilbert was installed as an elder here in Rosemary as part of our Kirk session. And he had learned his trade 11 years previously in First Cumber, where he had sung in the choir, where he had served, where he had been an elder there. And we benefited from that experience here in Rosemary. In the year 2000, Wilbert retired from his profession. And so he was able to take up the responsibility of clerk of session. And he served until 2008. And as John has already mentioned, uh, those were complicated and demanding days. And we are thankful particularly uh, for the leadership that he gave to us in those days of vacancy when the congregation was vacant for three years. But we are so thankful to God for this man that God brought to us, that brought into Claire's life and into the life of this congregation. Some might say he was a man short in stature, but he was big in voice, big in faith, big in love, and we are thankful to God for him. Well, thank you, thank you, Trevor. I, let me say that I say amen uh, to all of that. So uh, please assume that Trevor speaks and they, what he said. I wholeheartedly agree with it. Um, deep, I'm deeply appreciative to God for the contribution which Wilbert made to the congregation, uh, especially and for me anyway during the last years of my ministry here. We're going to sing again. This time, hymn 129, based on Psalm 34, to the beautiful tune Wiltshire, through all the changing scenes of life.
One of the great delights of the Christian life, you know, is to sing in a church when the whole congregation sings. Um, and the hymns for today were chosen by Wilbert's family, as were the th three scripture readings, and also the music which Noel played at the start of the service and which Noel will play at the end. So each little part of this service has been chosen with care. Wilbert was 83 years old when he died just a week ago today. Now no man and no woman is an island unto themselves. And all of us live our lives in a variety of contexts. So this afternoon I invite you to remember Wilbert in some of the contexts of his life and to give thanks to God for him and how he interacted with people who touched his life and how he in turn touched the lives of other people. Now let us think first of all and consider the context of the church of which he was a part and the context of the Christian faith. In the open acknowledgement of Wilbert's death and the reality of human mortality, we affirm our faith and our hope based upon the life and the death, the resurrection and the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in the face of human loneliness and the current cult of individuality in our society, marked often by fractured relationships, we affirm in the church that we belong together, belonging within families and within society, and belonging within the community of faith in the Christian church where we are privileged to be part of the worldwide body of Jesus. The Apostle John has written of how, by the death and resurrection of Jesus, millions of people from every tribe, language, nation, and race join in the great anthems of heaven. And we are a part of that worldwide community. You have already heard from Trevor about his membership and service in this congregation. He came to us as a man with a mature faith and with much experience of the church. But the seeds of that faith were sown many years before in his childhood, in his family who lived in the Sydenham area of East Belfast, and during his childhood and early life, Wilbert was a part of McGain Memorial Presbyterian Church, which is situated on the lower Newton Arch Road. It was there that he learned about Jesus. It was there that he learned about the love of God for the world, for the church, and for him also as an individual. In addition to Sunday school and Bible class, he was a keen member of the Boys' Brigade and the church choir, activities which he greatly enjoyed. And the final hymn that we'll sing this morning or this afternoon is often associated with the Boys' Brigade. So that's the initial early context of faith for, for Wilbert in his family and in McGain Memorial Presbyterian Church. Now, after his marriage to his first wife in 1965, he and Gladys set up home in Cumber and were members of First Cumber Presbyterian Church. And there he got to know Noel Williamson, who is playing the organ today. And Noel is a protege of Billy Kearns. And Billy said to Noel, I think maybe the time has come for you uh, to branch out on your own. You might apply for a job as an organist. Look on the Belfast Telegraph on a Friday night 
and you might see some vacancy. So there was a vacancy for a congregation and organist and choir master and first comber. So Noel applied and at the age of 17, he got the job. And ever since then, Noel and Wilbert have been good, good friends because it was there in First Cumber that Noel got to know uh, Wilbert and they have remained friends ever church, ever since. Noel was there active in First Cumber. He joined the church choir, acted as a relief organist there and in many surrounding congregations wherever there was a need. And he played an active part in the congregation of First Cumber and then was ordained there to the eldership in April 1988. You heard how then he came to North Belfast and became quietly integrated into this congregation and then as Kirk Session. Now if that's the first context of Wilbert, his early life in the Christian faith and the church, let us now give some thought to the context and importance of families. Wilbert is the only son of Robert and Molly Bennett, who lived, as I said, in the Sydenham area of East Belfast. Following his father's death, Wilbert gave his mother a lot of help, and particularly helped Molly Bennett uh, towards the end of her life, giving her practical support when she could no longer live in her own home and had to go into care. And that was prior to her death in 2006. It was back in 1965 that Wilbert had married Gladys McKee from South Armagh. They set up home in Cumber, as I have said, and there had the joy of the birth of two daughters, Ruth and Alison being added to their family. And in the course of time, of course, the context of this family grew and changed as Ruth married George Greg Bamford and Alison married Kevin Edgar. And from those unions came six grandchildren, all of whom are now adults. And Wilbert delighted in his grandchildren and followed their development activities with great interest. And the photograph on the back of the order of service is an indication of Wilbert's good relationship with the grandchildren. Now, sadly, this small family in Cumber suffered catastrophic loss when Gladys died in 1995 at the early age of 53, after a long battle with cancer just two weeks before their 30th wedding anniversary. Ruth and Alison were then in their 20s. Now we can pause ourselves just now and consider that devastating loss for Wilbert, for their two daughters, and the consequences which follow such a death. We often refer to births and marriages and deaths as rites of passage. Now, October 2024 will be a memorable month and year for this family, because in the last two weeks, as well as Wilbert's death, two more babies have been born. And Wilbert now has two great granddaughters um, and then in this two-week period, there's been the marriage of a granddaughter and also of Claire's 80th birthday. Who we could, well, maybe we won't sing happy birthday, Claire, but let us wish you many happy returns of your 80th birthday. The mention of Claire brings us to the next chapter or context of Wilbert's life. The death of Gladys led to some years of loneliness. Then he and Claire met and were married in 97, a marriage which has proved to be a great blessing to both of them. Now, a characteristic of modern society 
is that a large number of us live longer than was possible for previous generations. But with that comes the challenge to adult children having some responsibility for their aged parents. And, to, and so it was for Claire and Wilbert. As I said previously, Wilbert continued to give a lot of practical support to his mother in her old age. And following their marriage, Wilbert moved into Claire's house in Waterloo Park North, in which home Claire was living with her father and eventually caring for her widowed father, Alan Hill, who died 10 years later in 2007 at the unusually age of 102. Wilbert and Claire enjoyed almost 27 years of marriage, sharing a common interest in Rosemary Church, where Claire was and is an elder, sharing their common love of music, enjoying relaxed holidays with visits to their families, and travel in the United States, in Canada, and river cruises in continental Europe, enjoying the magnificent beauty of God's creation, and at the same time, the marvelous delights of music. Let me go on to the context of the world of work. Having been educated at Belfast High School, and then Queen's University. Wilbert worked first in Belfast public libraries for a few years, and then later transferred to the library of Queen's University. And his first placement there was in the medical library at the Royal Victoria Hospital, before he transferred down to the main library on, on the Queen's site. And he remained there until his retirement in the year 2000. Along the way, he kept his mind active, attaining certificates in biblical studies, which de deepened his understanding of the Christian faith, and also graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree from the university. Now, in remembering a person's life, one has to ask about the quality of the relationships which that man or woman had with colleagues, and with family, and with the people which one is privileged to serve professionally in life. Many generations of students of Queen's University remember Wilbert with affection. And when he heard of his death, my colleague John Dickinson, who had a part-time job as a student in the library in Queens, spoke of Wilbert's constant happy disposition and his sense of humor, his effectiveness as a library, librarian, and his willingness constantly to help students. He was endlessly helpful to students, establishing and then enduring friendships. Friendships with a great many students who became Presbyterian ministers. So Wilbert had a wide knowledge of many people in the ministry in the Presbyterian Church, and not only knowledge of them, but friendship with them as well. And of course, he also got to know a great many ministers because he was a substitute organist uh, in many churches. Noel Williamson said of him, that he, he was even tempered regardless of whatever pressure he was put under, calm, and reliable, very popular, enjoyed being in choirs, not only in Rosemary and in Cumber, but in choirs outside the, those two churches. And also something I didn't know about, which was that he was a supporter of the Northern Ireland football team at Windsor Park. Now, in the declining years, which is the last context of, Wil of Wilbur's life, Wilbur's health gradually declined over several years, especially during the COVID pandemic. And in November 2020, he became unable to walk or to stand. 
and at this point he needed the regular help of carers from Connect Health. And this continued until November 23 when he entered Ambassador Nursing Home, where he remained until his death a week ago. Now mention must be made of Claire's love and care for him, especially for those three challenging years when he was incapacitated but able to remain at home prior to going into a nursing home. And in passing, I might make mention of the need for carers to be honoured and reimbursed properly by our society because many individuals and families cannot survive without carers. Wilbur died on the last Monday in the week, and that last week from his death included Halloween on Thursday and All Saints Day on Friday the 1st of November. Now those days towards the end of last week, and the Sunday just gone yesterday which follows, are marked in many branches of the church as a Christian festival when we call to mind the death and resurrection of Jesus and call to mind those generations of Christian people who preceded us in our own lifetime, many of whom we knew, and we really ought to remember them regularly, but also many of whom we have read about cascading down through the centuries from the beginning of the church until this present time. Now many of you will know the hymn for all the saints who from their labors rest, who you by faith before the world confessed, your name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Hallelujah. You were their rock, their fortress, and their might. You, Lord, their captain in the well-fought fight. You, in the darkness, drear their one true light. From earth's wide bounds, from ocean's farthest coast, through gates of pearl stream in the countless host, singing to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, among such a host of people, we number Wilbert Bennett. Wilbert was a man of faith. He loved his Lord, was very willing to serve him as much as he could. He counted a privilege to be an active member of his church. He loved his family and all their generations, loved them dearly made a wide circle of friends, and his passing will be mourned by many people, but particularly by his family. And so today we thank God for him, for his long life, and for the many happy memories that we have of him. So now let us join together in prayer. It was at your command, O God, that this universe came to be. And you have given us this earth to be our island home, set as it is amongst the wandering of the stars in this boundless universe. And so we ask ourselves, who then are we? So recently arrived, so soon to depart. But we give you thanks that you have put eternity within our hearts, and they are endlessly dissatisfied until they find their rest in you. We give you thanks that you saw us exiles and bereft, restlessly locked into miseries of our own making, and you sent us Jesus. 
that he might break the stranglehold of selfishness and sin and death. And you have made us and loved us and rescued us from an otherwise transient existence through Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for the many blessings which we have enjoyed as we look back upon the years of our lives. We give you thanks for the wonder of human love and companionship. We give thanks for the opportunities given to us to have, enjoy the fellowship and service of Jesus inside your church and in the places where we live and where we work. But we give you thanks today, especially for Wilbert Bennett. And we thank you for his long life. And today our sadness shakes hands with thanksgiving for such a life so well lived and for the privilege of knowing him. As faith and love cascade from one generation to another, Bless, we pray, all within this widening circle of children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and bless them all with the riches of your Holy Spirit and the guidance of that same Spirit. And so we call to mind, Wilbert, in this service of worship this afternoon and give thanks to you for him and every remembrance we have of him in the various contexts of his life. As we recall the example of those who have gone before us, we pray that we may run it with, in our time with patience and faith that the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Grant us, we pray, both to receive and give expression to that eternal life, which is your free gift to us in Jesus Christ. Keep us, we pray, in unbroken fellowship with your whole church in heaven and on earth and bring us at the last to the joy of your eternal kingdom. We rejoice in that communion of saints and we give thanks for those who are closest to us in our own memories. Now, Lord, we pray that you will support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy life is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. And let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we sing together now the great hymn associated often with the Boys' Brigade, Will your anchor hold in the storms of life?
Let me remind you of that warm invitation to go to Lansdowne Hotel. The food is ready awaiting your arrival. May the blessing of God Almighty, the love of our Heavenly Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.